Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever the case may be, wherever you are in this bright, wonderful world we call home. This is Cross Examinations. Today we are talking dragons. Dragons are real. Um, 12. Sorry, I'm a little late today. Uh, is what it is. Uh, I am your host, Mike S. Miller. I am, uh, I am not a paleontologist. I am not a... Uh, I am not a biblical scholar. Oh, the list of things I am not. I am simply a comic book artist, creator, writer, um, who's been reading and studying about the Bible, about things like this, um, just as a hobby. Well, not as a hobby. <laughs> it's my faith. Um, but been studying about this stuff for about 20 years, looking up answers to questions, and now I'm here uh, sharing my accumulated brain stuff with you so uh glad you're all here please uh as you enter hit that like button hit that hit that share button let's uh share this out with some some other friends who might be interested in the bible or in the topic of dragons are real i am almost out of coffee Give me a second. Let me um, let me pop the old chat up without going into Boomer Town. If if this is possible, I hope everyone is having a wonderful, wonderful day so far. We are. What day is it today? December twenty eighth. We are so close to the end of the year. So close. So close. Um, let's see. Hit that mute button quick. Ah, it's already muted. Nice. All right. So let's see who's here today. We've got all our friends are here talking dragons. Remember, we're talking dragons. So uh, let's share that out to our social media so people can know today it's dragon talk on cross examinations. I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to share this out to the Facebook, even though, honestly, I don't hardly anybody sees, sees my posts on Facebook. Uh, it's silly. Talking dragon. Oops. Dragons. Come join us. Come fly with me. Let's fly. Let's fly away. And if you do hit that like button, if you're set up, if your YouTube is set up to Twitter, it should post to Twitter. Well, it does on mine. I know you can you can change that, but um, yeah, dragons are real. Crossing the nations live. All right, that's all I'm gonna post. Sharing that link out because ah, this is gonna be a fun one. So I don't wanna I don't really wanna get into the meat of it until we're uh, till we've got a full house. But let's see where we were yesterday on cross examinations. We talked about Jericho falling at the end of the show. Um, so let's answer any questions from there. Oh, we only have our good and constant, uh, poster, Nathan Rosario says to clarify my point about the earthquake, <clears throat> he was saying that, okay, let me just read what he said. Uh, last summer, there was a story about a fan celebration about fan celebrations during World Cup game in Mexico City being so intense that they generated seismic activity registering up to a two on the Richter scale. So if tens of thousands of people can create a measurable earthquake, then I wonder how much seismic activity would be generated by millions of people walking for hours several over several days, several hours a day over several days since stone walls are so rigid then that kind of sustained vibration over such a long period of time could do a significant amount of damage. Even if the vibration is undetectable to human senses, it could still be doing damage. Just, just a thought, and I'm not saying it's the reason that Jericho's walls fell. It was still a miracle. I just find it an interesting thing to think about. Lastly, to your point about your... Okay, uh, to that point, um, yeah, that's interesting. A, a two on the Richter scale, I wouldn't even notice here in San Diego, honestly. Um, but maybe that's because I'm so used to earthquakes. 
one other thing you want to think about in Mexico City. Mexico City is um, built on top of an underground uh, lake, which is why Mexico City is sinking. I don't know if you knew this, but they've been drawing so much water out of this underground lake that Mexico City is literally sinking. <laughs> the entire city is getting lower. Um, but I don't know if that would have anything to do with it, but I get your point. I hear your point. Um, lastly, to your point about the different meanings of symbols, and a swastika is a symbol of good fortune in Korea, and you will frequently find swastikas displayed on storefronts in South Korea as sort of a good luck charm for the owners. The swastika was also used by Native American tribes. The symbol itself predates Nazi Germany by centuries. I think I said that yesterday. Um, <clears throat> I said that it was used in, in Asia and in Native America. Um, so, yeah. I'm glad you're agreeing with me. You guys want to see the page I finished last night? I finished the page last night. Page six. Lone Star 2. Looking fun. Whee! Not really a spoiler, I guess. Not too much of a spoiler. Anyways. All right. Well, we've got 40 viewers in here. You guys want to talk some dragons or what? And I don't mean Game of Thrones dragons. Aloha. Hugh. Lorenzo Sketch. McGregorable. Hello, McGregorable. Thank you. Welcome for welcome to your first cross examinations. This is gonna be a fun one. Lone Star, the romance issue. Hey man, my books have action, adventure, romance, uh, humor. Eh, no spaceships. Um, vampires, horror. Oh. It's gonna be fun, man. It's gonna be fun. All right, let's uh here there be dragons. <laughs> okay, the first thing I want to do here is apologize because on a previous show, on a previous let me jack my chair up. This is I feel kind of short. No, I am kind of short, but that's beside the point. Um, on a previous show. I posted about this dragon, about this dinosaur, dragon, dinosaur. Why is my computer locking up right now? This is not a good thing. Please don't lock up. Thank you. So on a previous episode, uh, the Megalodon episode, I believe, I showed this and I said, and I was being honest because the scientists had said, had used the term mummified. I mean, this is Snopes for Pete's sake. And Snopes says, is this photograph of a mummified dinosaur? And Snopes even said, true, Snopes. <laughs> um, but it turns out this is a petrified dragon. Uh, which is to say the skin is actually fossilized. So the soft tissue, now then again, they have not broken this thing open to look inside. And uh, as we know for a fact, uh, they have been breaking open the bones, the bones <clears throat> of fossilized dinosaurs and finding soft tissue within them. So I don't know. I mean, this thing's very skin was fossilized. What happens if you break this thing's skull open? Are you going to find its brain? Are you going to find its soft, gooey brain inside? I don't know. I don't know, and I don't think they know either. Um, but from the, ish, from the information I have now that I have just discovered by researching this for about the past half hour, um, this does not... Um, mummified was too strong of a word. So I apologize. This is not, at least by the by the information I have now, this is not mummified in the sense that it is soft tissue merely hardened and preserved. It is soft tissue that was replaced <clears throat> and actually fossilized. Has it? Has it? Can you go ahead and go grab me a water bottle? 
Oh, wait. There's one right there, isn't it? All right. No floaty bits in the water. So, right off the bat, this does not dissuade me from dragons being real. Um, and I still think this is a remarkable specimen. I, the thing I love about this specimen, all of these specimens, <laughs> when they describe how how it how is it this creature managed to be mummified or fossilized, they always describe the flood. <laughs> They always describe the creature as as falling into water and then being rapidly deposited uh, and buried in a way that preserved its skin. I'm like, you're describing the flood. <laughs> um, so you were right, Malin. Werewolves are real. Is there soft tissues in the bones? Uh, I don't know. They haven't cracked this one open yet because the outside is so well preserved. You kind of don't want to break it. Um, I mean, it is a beautiful, beautiful specimen. That thing is so freaking cool, right? I mean, I don't know where this clay. Oh, this better not be porn, right? Uh, this goes to the Smithsonian. I mean, it is so gorgeous. It's like a statue, like walking right out of the ground and it's crazy because you know you're working looking at this thing, and this is real small right these uh ones on the side these are 20 inches long these long ones here 20 inches that's how big this freaking thing is i mean it's a dinosaur it's not a it's not a you know it's not a dog it, it looks small just because of the picture but man this thing is Behemoth. Uh, they said it's about probably weighed about as much as a white rhino. So, what is that? A dinosaur? You think these were around like seven thousand years? Seven thousand years ago? Oh, I think they were around a lot shorter than seven thousand years ago, man. Um. So I wanted to start with my apologies about this one because before I I was using the the scientist's own language to say that the this was a mummified. Uh, carcass, which it is not. They have not discovered actual soft tissue on this as yet. <clears throat> Hold on a second. Hello? Yep. Uh, hi. Okay. Jill's awake if you want to come up. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Hi. Hi, bye. Uh, I should really turn the phone off, but then that would be rude. I know, how rude. Why Why would you call me during my show? Um. Okay, so we got this out of the way. But I was wrong. This has no soft tissue that they have as yet discovered. Okay? Let's move on to... Something I discovered today. Uh, is that the one? No, that's not a sword. This one? Nope. Zool! I'm just going to play this. Yep. Welcome to the world of Zool, a fascinating creature that is finally stepping into the spotlight. After being encased in solid rock for about 76 million years, 76 million years. Ontario Museum in Toronto, who is settling into its new home, giving scientists and visitors alike an unprecedented glimpse into a poorly known slice of geologic history. Zool is an ankylosaur. Same kind of dinosaur. <clears throat> dinosaur that's known for wielding a bony and potentially lethal club at the end of its muscular tail. That explains why paleontologists David Evans and Victoria Arbor named this particular species of ankylosaur Zool. Oh, the curvicidator. The first part of the name, Zool, comes from a fictional demon that appeared in the original Ghostbusters movie. <laughs> you Don't cross the streams! The second part, curvicidator, is Latin for shin destroyer. 
based on the evidence, that's actually it doesn't look like the exact same kind of of uh, ankylosaur. rich and well preserved find from a layer of sandstone in northern Montana that also extends into Canada. Based on how Zool was found, watch this to have died in the water and floated on its back in a small river where its body became lodged on a sandbar. But not until the museum acquired the fossil and technicians began to cut into Listen. and probe the giant block containing the wool, did Evans realize how important a find it really is. That's because bits and pieces of many other species of many plants other plants species have turned up together with zool. <laughs> that includes parts of other dinosaurs and more familiar animals, like this turtle. It... <laughs> Zool's head and tail are now on display, along with the cast of its body from the belly side. Meanwhile, the rest of the fossil is still being prepared from the opposite side, where more evidence of the skin and the creature's armor plating is waiting to be revealed. But even as work continues, and visitors line up for their first glimpse of Zool, one thing is already clear. This is not just a dinosaur, it's a time capsule that has sampled an entire prehistoric environment, and one that will probably keep Evans and his colleagues busy for years to come. Uh, actually, I don't want to stop sharing because I want to keep the. Oop, oop, oop. Uh, oh, no, what is that? Where am I going? Where am I going? Where am I going? So, um, so yeah, um, that's not a dinosaur. That's a plastic toy. I'm disappointed. With. So, uh, if you read the uh, articles on this, they not only have discovered skin, the soft tissue, as in the skin they've, uh, uh, the the keratin, the the horns, um, it is soft tissue uh, all over Zool. So even though the other one, which looks like it would have had, you know, soft tissue on it, is not, it's just, it's just uh, remain. See, this one has skin. The spikes are actually also keratin, I believe. Um, la, 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 where was the, I was looking through several of these articles. Um, the fossil skull and tail unveiled to the sculpture. Full size fossil. Zool action die. Okay, game. So, anyways, this this Zool, along with all the other finds of soft tissue, um, be it the duck billed dinosaur they found with soft tissue, or the T Rex, or they're finding it very commonplace now to find soft tissue uh, with or in either inside the fossils or along with the fossil fossilized bones. So it's um, it's all evidence that that honestly it just couldn't exist. Uh, here we go. Not only is Zool's armor preserved, but also our soft tissues, including osteoderms, furrowed sheets of keratin, and the protein that makes up rhinoceros' horn in your fingernails. Oh, not and the protein, the protein. So, what what is this? Why is this here? These have nothing to do with. Um. So yeah, as in as as. All right, let me stop sharing now. It's, that's fun and all, but um, so someone here said, uh, someone said it could have just been a like a mudslide or something. That's fine. That's fine. If you wanna, if you wanna accept that, the thing is, this is this is like a constant in archaeology. They always, you know, just like that one you just saw. This, uh, this. All right, I'm gonna share it again. So just like this one, right? 
you have the complete fossil of 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 a creature that looks like it's practically in an action pose, right? Um, fossilized when you get like the complete skeletons of things that are fossilized, it's always um, explained that like they they fell into the water um, and then they were rapidly buried. How many of these things are there? I mean, there's literally, um, I think at last count, over 4 billion fossils, fossil, not, not species. There's only 250,000 fossil species, but there's like 4 billion fossilized remains that they've found. And actually that number I'm using is about 20 years old. So I imagine they've discovered quite a few more since then. Um, <laughs> if you count, uh, I mean, dude, how, how common are fossils, right? This is how common fossils are. You can go, uh, fossil stone tile. You can go to like Home Depot or something, and you can decorate your flipping house with fossils. <laughs> fossils, right? That's how common fossils are. Look at this. My, I, I knew, I remember this because my my brother lived in a house, uh, and they had fossil stone. Fossil stone tiles. That's how many fossils there are. And yeah, there are, I mean, a lot of it is 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 seashells and marine life and whatnot, because guess what? Who at the flood at the same time? Um, <laughs> let's see this one. Anyways, that's getting off point. That's getting off point. Oops. Stop screen sharing. So, um, Victor the River, don't think I've ever heard of them. Are they authentic or just made by Home Depot? No, dude, they're fossil stones. They're, they're, that's like going into a mountain and you have a mountain's worth of fossils because, because when you have all this, all this torrential rain, water coming up from the bottom of the, the ocean. I don't know. I personally believe there was some sort of a meteor or something that that decimated the. Uh, um... Okay, so in the creation model, according to the, um... that wasn't a feathered one, Lorenzo. Goodness, I'm not even gonna look at it. Um, the there was a water firmament above the earth, right? Whether that was ice or whatever how however the water was above the earth that protected the the earth from the sit, run, sit, rays of the sun the um i believe it was probably like some sort of a meteor shower or something that destroyed not saying that god didn't do it but i'm just saying that i think that uh that that's the that's the function like the in Jericho, right? I have I have I have ways of thinking that, that things were functionally practical, I guess is the right word. So um however that was there was this torrential freaking downpour. It said it rained for 40 days, but I think there was like parts where I mean like for example, uh you ever seen the movie um was it day after tomorrow? Is it the one where the, the atmosphere collapses? And there, and and the the cold vacuum of space, like freezes everything instantly. Do you have you, you guys know what movie that is? Um, that's a model of the flood, because yeah, if you if you collapse the atmosphere, right, you you break the water canopy. The, the Earth has to create a new atmosphere, um, but the atmosphere would collapse around it. That's why you go to to. Um, why you're you find ma uh, what do you call them? You find creature. What's it? A mastodon? Is it called a mastodon? I think it's called mastodon. Um, you find them like in Canada or in the northern reaches, frozen solid, with summer or or or, or, or tropical vegetation in their mouths, so well preserved that the freaking 
the indentations of the Mastodon's teeth are still in the vegetation. They were chewing. They were literally flash frozen, right? There's no explanation. I, there's just no explanation for that. Something doesn't, doesn't just die eating tropical vegetation and, and then get frozen into a glacier. Um, there's, there's no world where that works unless you have something catastrophic like the atmosphere collapsing. <clears throat> I, <laughs> John Malin, Day After Tomorrow. I think that's it. Look how much he loves that movie. I love the movie because they're using they're using um, scientific principles um, that prove the the biblical story, right? Um, you have a collapsing atmosphere. That's the only way you can fr flash freeze something as big as a bloody mammoth, right? <laughs> Mastodon. Is it Mastodon or Mammoth? I think it's Mammoth. Are they the same thing? Is ma Mammoth another word for Mastodon? I forget. Um, but at any rate, yeah. So so what you have when you have all this stuff is, is you get, um, first you will have layers of, of like sea life, right? Um, and then as you go up the shore, you get these different layers. Because animals, what are animals going to do? They're going to run away from, say, rising floods or whatnot. So you get sea life in one layer because they that is all what you also get is like, you know, tremendous earth upheavals and, and, and it, it's like Mount St. Helens, right? Exploding. You get ash everywhere. The ash settles. It becomes sediment. It becomes layers. Um, burying first the things that can't move very fast, like shellfish, perhaps. And then you get layers of uh, fish that maybe could have survived that sort of thing. I'm so glad you have pants on. I don't have... Oh, I do have a knife. Um, I'm cold. You're cold? Mm -hmm. It is kind of cold in here, huh? We are John. There you go. Elijah's on his way home. Okay. Okay. Close the door, okay? Wee, wee, wee. Wee, wee, wee. Um, and then you have, um, uh, I don't know. Well, after the marine life, then you'd have whatever slower creatures, whatever. You know, you have different layers and, and until you get to creatures that are fast enough to get to the top of the mountains and then they die and whatever. Um, so it makes sense that you have different chunks, I guess you'd call it, of, of types of creatures or, or creatures that can get away from stuff. So you have something like an Ankylosaurus getting buried with turtles and, and whatnot. They seem like they probably live in the same, uh, temperature. At what temperature does fire freeze? <laughs> fire freeze. Uh, the Cambrian explosion was those creatures buried by the flood first. Like the Sinosaurupteryx. Sinosaurupteryx prima was a theropod with feathers. It's even mentioned in the caption of the photo you showed. All right, let me see it again. Hmm. I don't think this is the one... Is it this one? Is this one? Uh, did I close that one out? Uh, fossil stone. All right, let me just look it up. Sino. Images. Du, 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 view more. Oh, here's the actual fossil. 
prestigious feathered dinosaur exhibit. Uh, how do you get to the site? Oh, there's a website. Fuzzy and feathers, are they the same thing? Fuzzy covering. <laughs> Hey, gummit, is that seriously the highest resolution? I want something with higher resolution. Related images. Um, sorry, I'm trying to find an image here that has good enough resolution. Because you'll have to forgive me if I don't take it on faith. Oh, here's one. Is that? Is that a close up? Sorry, this I know this is making terribly uh, interesting viewing. <laughs> this is Archaeopteryx, right? No? What is this? Oh, that's a bird. Fossilized birds, but but birds aren't old enough to be fossilized. Dino fuzz, dino fuzz. Uh, eh, I'm not going to keep doing this. I'm not going to keep looking for it. <clears throat> um, from what I've seen in the past, what they describe as feathers, they also they describe as uh, proto feathers, which yeah, essentially means like fuzz. Um, I don't know. Maybe dinosaurs, or maybe certain dinosaurs, dragons, whatever. Uh, had hair. You know what? If you just saw the, if if the rhino was completely extinct, right, and all we ever saw from the rhino, uh, dang it, all we ever saw from the rhino was its bones, uh, and we never saw one alive. They would have said that was a dinosaur. Am I right or am I wrong? Or am I right or am I wrong? Right? They would have they would have said that was a dinosaur. Right? Because look, dinosaur, rhinosaur. Um, but rhinosaur is a mammal. So uh, you know. I think the amount of things they don't know uh eclipses the things they do know by a wide range. So uh I'm not so quick to jump to the jump to the uh, oh dinosaurs are birds crap. Uh, some of the dinosaurs we have may not have even been reptilian. I have no idea because just you know just based on this. Let's see. I'm I'm thinking maybe the uh, let's see Triceratops may have been much more closely related to a rhinoceros than a T Rex. The Triceratops very well could have been a mammal. Actually, I mean, look at it. It just looks like a freaking rhino with, with two horns and a shield on its head. So I'm going to guess this. You know, I'm going to put this side by side. Rainu boons. Do, 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 do. Let's do a side by side here. Rhino bones. Dino bones. <laughs> am I right or am I wrong? Am I seeing things or am I insane? Different bone structure, different weights. Yeah. 
but that's not necessarily to say that this had to be reptilian, right? This is, although, um, what was it? This, the, the, I don't know why I'm getting into this. The Griffin. People speculate that the, uh, the legend of the Griffin comes from unearthing the, uh, a Triceratops because, I mean, look at the, the beak. It looks like it has a bird beak, right? Um, but then it looks like it has a lion's body. So I think, uh. That's probably a good speculation. Anyways, I'm totally getting off topic here. All right, let's close these out. Yes, I'm in the middle of a show. I'm not on the phone. I'm in the middle of a show. <laughs> All right, stop screen sharing. All right, let's get to some questions. Uh, I'll just start at the bottom. Aquaman, number one movie, beat Je Last Jedi already. <laughs> okay, that has nothing to do with it. Not showing the pictures, Mike. Oh, that wasn't showing the pictures? Are you serious? No, that was showing the pictures. Wasn't it? Anthropologists have even found tiny hobbit-like people. That's true. That's another weird thing to get into, but <laughs> they found hobbits. Uh, we've got giant skulls. We've got all kinds of stuff that just don't fit into the whole evolutionary model, and people want to ignore it, but I don't ignore it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Everybody knows dinosaurs are big chickens. Nobody calls me chicken. Uh, that last 30 seconds, I saw the pictures too. Uh, and your voice is behind. My voice is behind? All right, let me uh, turn off my camera for 10 seconds. That should readjust my thing. Uh, show hippo bones. Is that an ancient dino? Um, I don't know. Let's see. Oh. Hippo bones. Optimus. The Ramnoceros. Um, images. Uh, I think because of the molars on a hippo, people probably would not uh, speculate. Although there's probably something to do with, like... Eh. I don't know. Are there... Are there let's see. Uh, oh, yeah. You had, like, brachiosaurus and stuff. They had molars, right? Uh, let's see. What kind of teeth did a Brachiosaurus have? Brachiosaurus. Dun, 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 dun. Skull. Oh, that's weird. No, Brachiosaurus had sharp teeth. That's interesting. Why do they always show it chewing up uh, vegetation? Gosh, if a bre brachiosaurus was a was a, a, a vegetarian and it has sharp teeth, then uh, how come they always say that T. Rex was a, um, a carnivore because it has sharp teeth? Why d does sharp teeth mean you have to eat meat? Hmm? Inquiring minds want to know. There is so much we don't know that they want you to take for granted. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, different bone structure and bone weights. True, true, true. Pandas have sharp teeth. Very true. Very true. Brontosaurus. Does a brontosaurus have... Sorry, I'm not sharing the screen. You guys want me to share the screen as I look, look this stuff up? I mean, it's probably more fun than looking at my ugly mug. All right. Um, brontosaurus. Oh, look, sharp teeth. What other, what other dinosaurs do we take for granted? Eat, uh, eat duckbill. Let me 
we take for granted that they are, what do you call it, vegetarians. I don't even know. Wow, that's a really weird road. The teeth. Now I'm just looking at the teeth on dinosaurs. This is weird. Um, what else we got? Vegetarian. Di what are the what are the vegetarian dinosaurs? Zool probably was. I have to use the word dinosaurs. So Triceratops was. Triceratops skull. Let's see. Tiny, tiny little rows of teeth. Wow. That's, look how thin they were. Kind of trippy, huh? Okay, well, if no, that can't that's not real, is it? That looks fake. Is this real or fake? That's that's another problem is they do a lot of reconstruction on things. So sometimes they're you're looking at the imagination of an artist. You're not looking at an actual fossil um, because they'll take a couple chunks of a skull and the rest will all be like plaster or reconstruction and stuff. I mean, this is totally, that's not real at all. Um, what else we got? What else? Uh, Stegosaurus. Stegosaurus. Let's check out Stegosaurus skulls. As we know, the Cambodians in the 12th century... Saw the Stegosaurus living. Okay, if this is accurate, if this is real, tiny, tiny little weird teeth. I never, I've never done this. I've never looked at the teeth on all these creatures. So you're discovering with me. What is this? Um. <clears throat> Maybe teeth don't preserve quite as well. Uh, Ankylosaurus. Well, we have that. Hadrosaurus. Hadrosaurus. Hadrosaur. Hadrosaur. This vegetarian has pretty sharp teeth for a vegetarian. Oh, there's a different one with. Okay, those aren't even real. That's that's not real. If it is, that is weird. Okay, I just clicked on three different hadrosaurs, and they all had different kinds of teeth. This is the imagination of whoever's putting these things together. <laughs> what the heck? Replica fossil. Yeah. This one, you can see like nothing, nothing, nothing. This is weird. <clears throat> yeah, some of the uh, some of the artists who are putting these things together, um, put almost human molars on them. Some of them put those weird little comb-like things. Uh, it's it's making you wonder how much do they actually know if they. If the people putting these things back together um, can't even agree on what the teeth of the dinosaur look like, that's how little information they're going on. But they they'll just sell it to you. So uh, if you think that looks weird, you should see it with organs than skin. <laughs> there are native stories of flying lizards, birds that would eat and hunt people. Oh yeah, all over the place. Um, there were newspaper reports of these happening. Ancient, not ancient, hundreds of just hundreds of years ago, uh, uh, newspaper reports in England, um, and I think there are news newspaper reports in America. Um, yeah, it's this the the human the human connection to dinosaurs. Okay, I know I did this on the other stream, but since this is the dinosaur stream, this is the dragon stream. I am going to read to you the description of a Marco Polo in the 12th century. I'm going to read to you his description. And um, 
This is, I'm going to, here, I'll share it to you. This is from a Christian site, I think. Forbidden history? Oh, maybe not. Maybe it's just forbidden history. Oh, dinosaurs and the Bible. But I have actually gone to the um, Gutenberg Project and looked this up for myself. This is legitimately quoted from Marco Polo's writing. So, <clears throat> leaving the city of Yachi and traveling 10 days in a westerly direction, you reach the province of Karazan, which is also the name of the chief city. Here are seen huge serpents 10 paces in length, about 30 feet, and 10 spans girt of the body, about 8 feet. At the forepart, near the head, they have two short legs, having three claws, like those of a tiger. Big, sharp claws is, I think, the implication there. With eyes larger than a four-penny loaf, upon it, the quattro denari, which uh, would be probably like a dinner bun, and very glaring. Um, the jaws are wide enough to swallow a man. Uh, I don't know about you, but I think that's probably about two feet wide, at least. Um, and teeth large and sharp. And their whole appearance is so formidable that neither man nor any kind of animal can approach them without terror. That means it's uh, bigger than a lion um, or any kind of animal. A rhino. He, he was familiar with rhinos. Uh, he was familiar with elephants. So an elephant couldn't approach this without terror. Uh, others are met of smaller size, being eight, six, or five paces long, not feet, paces. And the following method is used for taking them. In the day, by reason of the great heat, they lurk in caverns, from whence at night they issue to seek their food, and whatever beasts they meet and can lay hold of, with whether tiger, wolf, or any other, they devour. Now let's let's go back to the description. This is they're gonna describe how they killed them and what they use their 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 body parts for. But the description, 30 feet long. <laughs> 30 feet long, 8 feet around the body, short forearms with 3 claws, right? Here, let's just click on that. Short forearms with 3 claws like that of a tiger. Um, uh, jaws, so I don't know how wide word allosaurs jaws wide enough to swallow a man. Let's see if there's a allosaur man chart. Sorry, I spelled allosaur wrong. <laughs> Size comparison. Oh, look, allosaurus 30 feet long. 30 feet. It says it right there. An Allosaurus is 30 feet long. Jaws wide enough to swallow a man. Oh, no, that's the T-Rex. All right, the Allosaurus. But still, jaws wide enough to swallow a man. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, how long is it? 42 feet. Wow, that's, a bit, that's much bigger than the Allosaurus. So he was specific. <clears throat> To the length, the three claws, jaws wide enough to swallow a man, um, uh, the girt eight feet around the body. Yeah. How dead on. And uh, big eyes, you know, bigger than, you know, a regular eye, I guess. Um, very glaring. Although this is all, again, this is all artist rendition. The, the eyes are... Uh, Soft tissue. We have not yet found an Allosaurus um, soft tissue, so we can't judge exactly uh, what how glaring their eyes were. <laughs> but I'm going to take it on Marco Polo's word that their eyes were very glaring. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> and this is all then so matter of fact. This is just how they killed them, what they ate, what they used. They said, after which they dragged themselves towards some lake, spring, or water, or river, in order to drink by their motion in this way. 
Uh, by their best weight, they make deep impression as if a heavy, heavy beam had been drawn along the sands. Those who employment is to hunt them observe the track by which they most frequently accustomed to go and fix into the ground spikes of wood, sharp irons on the tips, which they covered in the sand as not to be perceptible. When, therefore, the animals make their way toward the places they usually haunt, they are wounded by the instruments and speedily killed. The crows, as soon as they perceive them to be dead, set up to scream, and this serves as a signal to the hunters who advance to the spot, proceed to separate the skin from the flesh, taking care immediately to secure the gall, which is the most highly esteemed in medicine. The cases of the bite in cases of the bite of the mad dog, the penny weight of it is all normal. Ah, this is just what they do with the medicine. The flesh of also uh, of the animal is sold at a dear rate, being thought to have a higher flavor than other kinds of meat, and by all persons it is esteemed a delicacy. Uh, Marco Polo, Travels of Marco Polo, written in the 12th century or the 1200s. That's not the 12th century, is it? 1200s would be the 13th century. Anyways, this was not that long ago. He was giving, and he does this with a bunch of different animals. He doesn't just, dis, you know, this isn't some lark. This is him describing uh, something that he's either seen himself or he has been described um, by the locals, the natives, and whatnot. And there are lots of other examples of, of uh, like, Mkele Membe, Mkele Membe, uh, which is a brontosaurus or a brachiosaurus that, that uh, a tribe in Africa to this day says they see in the river. Um, Job 40 describes sauropod when it describes behemoth. Oh, yeah. In Job, the the... It describes a, a beast that can stand in the middle of like the river, drinking up the river, a tail like a cedar, not like a branch, like a cedar. What creature in the history of planet Earth has a tail the size of a cedar tree, right? It's got to be a brachiosaurus, brontosaurus, some sort of a sauropod. Uh, there have never been fossil found below 16,000 feet. Okay, I'm smaller than 20 years ago. What? I don't see how trans transitory fossils are a threat to the teachings of Christ. The point of Genesis is that God created everything in existence. Um, then you don't take the Bible seriously, Lorenzo. Um, I mean, your your it doesn't your salvation doesn't hinge on whether or not you believe this stuff. But I believe if and again, uh, I myself was raised agnostic. I was raised as an evolutionist, I believed it until I didn't have to believe it. <clears throat> um, there came a point in time where I I accepted Christ, I accepted the Bible, and I believed what you believe, right? That uh, that evolution was was how God did it. Uh, I was I was a uh, I forget. I always forget how how you call it. Theistic evolutionist. Um. So at that point. It didn't really matter to me um, the mechanisms of creation. And yeah, there are no transitory fossils. That's actually true to Wolf. Um, <laughs> Lorenzo, no. Uh, uh, and so it wasn't until I literally didn't care anymore. I didn't have a dog in the fight. It could have gone any way that I saw... Um, for the first time that there was actually evidence against evolution and um there was evidence the evidence of origins lines up much more closely to the biblical model and i don't call it a theory i call it a model because you take the information in the scriptures and you do your best to create a model by which a model of how things happened that line up with the biblical descriptions of how things happened. And um, all the evidence of our existence lines up more uh, with the creation model than it does with evolutionary theory. And if you spend as much time researching it as I did, and you don't have a dog in the fight, you're like, I don't, I don't care. I'm saved. Uh, I believe Christ saved me. I don't care uh, if he used evolution or if he if he created everything in six literal days. All I want to know is the truth. And then 
you go from that position and you look at all of the evidence, um, I can pretty much guarantee you, you will become a young earth creationist at that point. Um, I mean, <laughs> I follow the facts, right? And that's where the facts led me. So if, if you are open-minded and you're willing to look at all that evidence, I mean, there are, there are PhDs and there are, are paleontologists and there are people who looked at the facts and they were hardcore evolutionists and they looked at the facts, but they were reasonable and logical, logical enough to, to not be trying to force an agenda into it. And they became creationists before they became believers in God even. Um, it was it was the facts on the table that led them to accept that there's no way this stuff happened through evolution and that they became believers in God and then they became Catholic or they became Christian. Um, Dolphin Lambert is one that that pops to mind. Um, but yeah, those are the greatest. Those are, those are the best testimonies because it wasn't they weren't being convinced of uh, uh, they weren't being convinced of because of what they believed they were believing because of what they were convinced of right and i love those testimonies you should check them out you should do more research um the bible is not evidence no the bible is a record the bible is a record the evidence lines up with the bible um there's evidence that backs events happening inside the bible that's right support uh, significant evolutionary change is most often sudden as a result of catastrophic environmental change. That is the theory that they had to come up with because they realized that uh, survival of the fittest and Darwinian evolution, there is simply not enough time uh, on in the agreed-to age of planet Earth for that to have happened. So they had to come up with excuses and new theories uh, you know, punctuated equilibrium is what you're talking about. Hopeful monsters, seeding, all of these freaking ridiculous multiverse. Multiverse. They had to come up with all these ridiculous theories because they saw that the, the, the Darwinian evolution was failing to uh, uh, agree with reality, with logistical facts. Darwinian evolution has failed, and that's why you are bringing up punctuated equilibrium, because they brought in punctuated equilibrium as an excuse for why Darwinian evolution has failed. And every other theory they're going to bring up is some other theory, because, because at the core of it, they realize it can't happen. It's, it's, there's simply not enough time. Heck, there isn't enough time in the history of the universe. Forget the history of planet Earth uh, for evolution to have occurred. You cannot get life from non-life. You can't strike two rocks together and create a cell. You can't strike two rocks together and create a reproducible amino acid. It's just impossible. Uh, it's, it's functionally absurd. Um, for those who don't know, <laughs> In order to get what is essentially the first building block of um, the first building block of life, which is a reproducible amino acid, amino acids are are, are created uh, with what are what are described as right hand and left hand molecules. So just consider them black and white, right? <laughs> black and white molecules. Um, it, it's like you have a molecule, and through I, I believe it's through electrical charge like lightning right uh it will it will break a molecule up into two parts a left hand and a right hand um and then this is the primordial soup they call it now you can connect what the, these things they're like magnets right left hand right hand they are they are attracted to each other and they um i mean left all the molecules they, they want to reform into chains and the molecules will create these chains, tens of thousands of, of, of molecules long, right? And an individual strand um, 
I don't even know if you'd call that amino acid. I think that's what they actually created in the Stanley Miller um, experiment in the 70s. Uh, they, they created a non-reproducible amino acid. Because for an amino acid to reproduce, you have to take one of these strands that is randomly put together, right? So black, white, black, 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 white, white, white. It's like a binary computer code. You have to take one of these strands that is tens of thousands of molecules long. And you have to find another strand the exact same length with the exact same order of, of information, right? Black, 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 white, black, 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 white, 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 black, 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 right hand, left hand. They have to match up exactly and they have to zip, zip together like a zipper. That's hard. It's not hard. It's impossible. <laughs> it is literally, mathematically, logistically impossible for that to happen by random chance. Now, if you want to be a theistic evolutionist and say God could do that, yeah, sure, God could do that. Um, so that's not the argument. This is the argument against the atheistic view that life could emerge from non-life. It is not possible in any way. This is why they come up with something as absurd as the multiverse theory, where they say that there are so many multiverses, so many different universes, that literally anything is possible in any, in, in, in one universe or the other. And we just happen to live in the universe where, where, that was possible, where evolution was possible. Bull crap! It is such a line of bull crap. You are an abject fool to believe it. I am sorry for telling you, but if you have some expectation that 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 ridiculousness is what you're hinging your entire belief structure on. I'm sorry. I don't know what else to call you. You're a fool. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't mean it. I don't mean to insult you. But can you not see how stupid of an idea that is? Is it impossible to see for you? If and if it is impossible to see how stupid that is, then you are you're just completely closed-minded and you are refusing to believe something that is right in front of your face. Um the fool says is an the fool says in his heart there is no god that is scripture and um i know that's a long way around to ex ex explain that uh but daggum man sorry i know i get a little uh i get a little excited about this topic and sorry i didn't take a whole lot of questions this time but it has been yeah admit it mike atheists have more faith than you i absolutely agree <laughs> Because if you have enough faith to believe that, you do have way more faith than I do. It has been an hour. I thank you all for being here. This was a really fun stream. Sorry I didn't get to your questions. If you have questions, comments, please do drop them in the uh, in the comments section, <clears throat> and I will get to them tomorrow on tomorrow's show. This has been Dragons Are Real episode of Cross Examinations. I think this is our 40 first or 42nd episode um it's been fun it's been fun i hope you guys go back and check out some of the other ones if you haven't seen them already uh do like and subscribe to this channel i do do this every day and then you know i do other random streams the aloha hour uh drawn and quartered other drawing streams and just uh, uh make comics great again streams um so come on back um hope to hope to make you part of this this uh fellowship this family this this community Thank you for being here. Good day and God bless.